again and take a look at some more factoring, remembering that we always take the greatest common factor out first of any polynomial, and after that we count the number of terms in the polynomial. If it happens to be that there are four terms in it, we're going to use a method that we call grouping. Before we introduce that method, I'd like to go back to a situation like this and help you understand why grouping works. Remember that if you factored 2x plus 8 by taking the greatest common factor out of it, the common factor that's in both of those terms is the number 2, and that's what you would factor out. What I'd like to remind you of, though, is before you did that, you could write this problem down like this. Um, in a little bit, uh, e each term factored, not prime, it's not in its prime form, but pulling that common factor out. Your final results, though, when you factor out the 2 out of this one and this one, is to have the x and the 4 in the parentheses. Yet, look at the 2 here and the 2 here. You factored it out of each term, but you only wrote it down once in front of this grouping symbol. That's the only part that's going to be a little bit hard about factoring by grouping. We have a common factor in each um, term that we're going to represent, and we write that common factor down one time. Some people don't like that. Let's go ahead and look at an actual problem that involves four terms. When we say let's factor this by grouping, I'm going to grab a red pen, what we mean is let's group the first two terms and let's group the last two terms and see if they share a common factor. And if they do, let's pull it out. So these two terms share a common factor of x to the second power. We'll factor that out and then inside the parentheses we'll need an x here so that x squared times x is x cubed and then we'll need a 7 right here and then we'll do the same thing with the second group. In this particular group, a 3 is the greatest common factor in those two terms. So we'll factor out a 3, and we would be left with an x plus 7 here when we checked it. You know, does 3 times x give us 3x, and does 3 times 7 give us 21? And it does. If this problem is going to factor by grouping, now we could rearrange it, go back and rearrange the original problem, um, if ever need be, these binomials have to match exactly. They are a common binomial factor in this term and this term. We're going to pull that out and write it down one time. Just like in this problem, the 2x plus 2 times 4, we pull the 2 out and write it down just once. So I'm going to pull the x plus 7 and write it down once. And then this x squared plus 3 goes in its own binomial and the Four terms originally given have been factored into two binomials. We can check it by multiplying. So we have x times x squared is x cubed. That's this term. x times 3x, I'm sorry, 3 is 3x. That's that term. 7 times x squared is 7x squared. That's this term. And 7 times 3 is 21. And we can be certain that we, we uh, factored that problem correctly. Let's do another. Okay, so this is a polynomial in four terms. We'll group the first two, we'll group the last two, and we'll take the greatest common factors out of those groups. So here a 3 is common to each of those, and m to the third power. So 3m cubed, and I would now need an m squared as my first term here, and then just a minus 5. And just check that and see if that's 3m to the fifth and check that and see if it's a minus 15m cubed. The common factor here is a positive 2, so we'll factor out 2, and we'll need an m squared minus 5 in the parentheses, so that 2 times m squared is 2m squared, and 2 times a minus 5 is that minus 10. If I'm to be successful, these need to match, and when they do, I write them down one time, so I have the m squared minus 5, 
and then the 3m cubed plus the 2 goes in the other binomial, and I am done. This is in its factored form. You do not need to write it in this order. This binomial could be in the front, and this binomial could be in the back. You could have the 3m cubed plus 2, and then the m squared minus 5, because multiplication is commutative. You can do it in any order. The one thing you should remember to do is to check this problem when you're all done. Multiply it out to see if you have the original problem. Let's do another one. The problem that I'm going to share with you next is going to have a minus sign in front of the third term. That's important. It's, it's a little bit more difficult. You have to watch for that scenario. So here we have four terms, and when we factor with four terms, we factor by grouping. So we group the first two terms, and then we group the second two terms. That minus sign belongs to the 6. It does not belong to the 9. And so I like to go swipe, swipe, or add a negative, because it's a subtraction piece, and I like to get my parentheses around that negative sign and ensure that I have a plus sign right here. Let's go ahead and factor. I need to take out a 2x squared out of each of those. So 2x to the second power, and when I get that out, I have a 2x here. And then I'm going to need a minus 3 right here. The greatest common factor between those two terms is a 3. But if I just take out a positive 3, but I'm going to write it down. Please don't, you, don't write this down. If I took out a positive 3, then I would need a negative 2x here, and I would need a positive 3 here. This, these binomials do not match when I factor out a positive 3. It occurs when there's a minus sign in front of this third um, term. What I should have done is I should have factored out not a positive 3, but a minus 3. So that I could have a positive 2x right here, because a minus 3 times 2x is this minus 6x, and a minus 3 times a minus 3 is this positive 9. So right there is that positive 9. And oh, look, those match. I write them down once, and then the 2x squared minus 3 go in their own set of parentheses. I tend to put the 2x minus 3, um, the common binomial that's in these, each of these two terms, and then the 2x squared minus 3, but order does not matter. Let's do one more where the only common factor is a 1. Not a 3 or a 2x squared, that the only common factor in this factoring by grouping is a 1. So let's go with So here's my polynomial in four terms. I'll group the first two terms. I'll group the last two terms. And in the first group, I have a greatest common factor of x squared. So I'm going to factor that out. So I'll factor out x squared. And here I'll need a 5y for that product to be the 5x squared y. And here I'll just need a 1. When I look at that, I'm a little bit stymied, and I go, geez, a 5 and a 1, they don't share any common factors, they don't have y's in both of those. When that's the case, you have to just factor out a 1. If this happened to be a minus 5y, you might be factoring out a minus 1. But I'm going to factor out a 1, and then 1 times 5y minus 1 is that original expression. But lo and behold, these two binomials do match. So I write them down once in my final answer, and then this x squared plus 1 goes in the other binomial. And again, I would FOIL that out to see if I got my original problem. That's about all you might see in a factoring by grouping problem as a beginning introduction to this.